Hi friends, welcome back to the course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edupedia World. Previous lectures we discussed about the different kind of uh, bonding systems, interactions and forces between atoms and molecules. Today we will come into the atomic scale of mainly metals because uh, material science a lot of it deals with metals and uh, alloys and uh, we'll see how is the crystal system how is the crystal structure of a material let's uh, go into details and understand what i'm talking about so as i said the properties of a material are influenced by its structure how is the structure of a material helps uh, define the end property of the material therefore it is uh, quite pivotal to understand and uh, enhance our knowledge about the structure of a material now broadly speaking any material can be classified into two categories on the basis of structure right so the solids exist as either a crystalline material or a amorphous material we will be focusing on solids because the abundant amount of elements and all the alloy systems are in the solid state and most of the material science will deal with that so we'll focus on that for the time being now what does each of them mean specifically solid exists as a crystalline material or a amorphous material crystalline material means there is a long range order in the material whereas in a amorphous material there is no ordering in the material in the next slide, we'll discuss it further. Let's see. Crystalline material, as I said, has long range periodic arrangement of atoms. That is, if I give you, if there is an atom here and here, and the material is crystalline, then you can predict where will be the next atom. That is, it is, it has a specific location where the atom can be present and there are locations where atom cannot be present that is what is meant by long range ordering right now this long range ordering is a repetitive 3d pattern that is the ordering is present in the three dimension so it will be in x axis y axis and z axis there will be ordering in this direction this direction and in this direction and uh, that is typical characteristic a 3d pattern is a typical characteristic of a crystalline material now as uh, i said uh, there is a pattern in a crystalline material you might ask that there must be a very basic unit in the three dimension that can be repeated over and over again to get the whole 3d isn't it exactly that is how it happens there are what is known as unit cells we'll come into that those unit cell is the smallest block of 3d space which can be repeated in x axis y axis and z axis to give you the whole 3d pattern of the crystalline material therefore it is called the unit cell it's the very basic building block of the crystalline material now uh, to put things into perspective crystalline material composes of most of the metals a lot of ceramics and some polymers when i say metals i include metal as in elemental metal as well as alloys which has combination of different metals okay now you can say that okay it's all fine that we have 3d arrangement but is it possible to have different kind of 3d arrangement actually as it happens there is a possibility to have different kinds of 3d arrangement but the different kind of 3d arrangement can be grouped into seven crystal system and further classified into 14 bravi lattice so that 14 bravi lattice kind of includes all the possible 3d arrangements that can be present in a crystalline material will not go into the 14 bravi lattice we'll see the seven crystal systems uh, that's what i have written here that there are different crystal structure it need not be one type of 3d arrangement and the different crystal structure has a lot of influence on the property that kind of determines a lot of property the material will have so it is quite important to understand 
what category of crystal structure does a particular element or a metal come under now we have seen what is a crystalline material alternatively what is a non crystalline or amorphous material these both are alternative names for the same thing those are materials which do not have a long range ordering what do i mean long range ordering i have written long range ordering here and long range order here so if there can be short range or ordering like there can be order in a material let's say in 10 atom length or 100 atoms length but it does not extend throughout the material right or to a large macroscopic region long range order is absent in such a scenario and that scenario will result in a non amorphous material a very ex simple example of non amorphous material which you all have seen is silica or sand it is a non amorphous material though the silicon has kind of a sp3 hybridization it should have three bonds attached to it but it does not have there are many broken bonds as a result the 3d repetition does not happen as it should happen thereby it is amorphous okay now that we have got a glimpse into what is a crystalline system and what is an amorphous system let us uh, dive deep and understand the different kind of crystal structures that i have mentioned here okay before that let's discuss some more thing the metal system that we will be discussing throughout our, our lectures will be based on hard spear model now what is hard spear model hard spear model assumes atoms to be like marbles hard marbles if there is one atom here then another atom is here and this cannot intrude into the space here like there is a physical repulsion these are this is hard spear model atoms are considered hard spears unit cell as i already discussed is the smallest building block which can be repeated in the three dimension to get the whole crystalline material now a unit cell what is the characteristic of a unit cell a characteristic of a unit cell will be that it will have three dimension it will have a x y and a z dimension and it might be something like this like a cube which uh, this angles as 90 degree and all the sides equal or it might be a cuboid which all with all the angles as 90 degree but the sides not equal and it can take other configurations too that we will see in the next slide but uh, to give you an idea a uh, unit cell composes of three set of parallel faces this face and this face is parallel to each other this face and this face is parallel to each other and the front face and the back face are parallel to each other so it is a parallel piped shaped with three set of parallel faces as i said there are seven crystal systems and there are 14 types of arrangement of atoms that can take place in the seven crystal system so total of seven, 14 kind of arrangement known as 14 bravi lattice exist fine so now let us uh, see what are the seven crystal systems this is the unit cell which i have shown over here but the only difference being this angles are alpha beta gamma and the lengths are in the x axis here they have considered this as the x axis a this as the y axis so the length is b and this as the z axis and the length as c okay so these are the six variables which define a crystal system the angles alpha beta gamma and the sides a b c now the different combination of angles and sides will give rise to seven different kind of crystal system let us see each of them one by one the cubic system which will be the most popular system in the metal system scenario which day in and day out is the cubic system and that has all the three sides of equal length and all the three angles 90 degree okay second the hexagonal system this is the second most important crystal system when we talk about metals in hexagonal system we have two equal sides and a different third side 
and two angles as 90 degree and the third angle exactly 120 degree. For a hexagonal system which do not has have any stress inside it, C is approximately equal to 1.633 times A. But you need not remember this. The basic idea is two sides are equal, third is not equal. Tetragonal, you can think of this as a, uh, not exactly a matchbox, but something which has two faces of equal length. This is a square, but the third dimension goes to a very large length. So what we see here is A is equal to B, but C is different. And all the three angles are 90 degree, right? So that is tetrahedral. Rhombohedral is three angles are equal, three sides are equal, but the three angles, though equal, are each different from 90 degree. Orthorhombic has no side equal, but all the angles equal to 90 degree. Monoclinic has no side equal, two angles equal to 90 degree, and the third angle is not equal to 90 degree. And finally comes triclinic. This is the most non-symmetric system in which none of the angle is equal, uh, rather none of the sides are equal and none of the angles are equal to each other and none of the angle is equal to 90 degree. Right. So we see that these are seven different kind of systems which can exist and based on which all unit cells can be defined. But as I already mentioned, these two, the first two will be the most important for our course. And in fact, even in advanced courses, when we focus mainly on metals and metal alloy systems, cubic and hexagonal are the most important systems. Now, there are four different ways in which atoms can be arranged in a system. Right. This basically gives you just the outline of the unit cell, but this does not tell you where the atoms are going to be placed. So what are the four different locations where atom can be placed? Those are, one is simple. I will take the example of cubic system, let's say. In the simple cubic system, only atoms are occupied at the eight corners. Okay. This is simple. Okay. Second system is known as the body centered. In body centered what happens in addition to the eight atoms at the eight corners, we have another atom at the center, right? This is body centered. Then we have what is known as the face center. Face center as the name suggests, is you have atoms at eight corners and you have atoms at the six faces too. Okay, so this is face centered and there is another which is known as edge center which does not exist in the cubic system. It does not exist in the cubic system, edge center. But uh, in the system in which it does exist, the edge system what will happen is something like this. This is not a cubic system. I'm not going to say what system supports the edge center, edge center system. but just know that there will be systems which will have edge center and in those system we will have eight atoms at the eight corners and two atoms one at the top face and one at the bottom bottom face this is edge center right so these are the four different kind of ways in which atoms can be arranged in a given unit cell and these are the different ways a unit cell itself can exist and this combination will give you 14 Bravi lattice. Now you can ask me that I said f these three systems of atom arrangement exist in the cubic system, but the edge center does not exist. Why is it so? This is so because if we try to make a edge center in a board cubic system, then what will happen is that it will come out to be a replication of I think uh, the tetragonal system, I'm not quite uh, sure about it from the top of the head, but it will be just a repetition of a different kind of crystal Brave system which already exists. So we do not take it into the body centered system, uh, rather into the cubic system, rather it goes into the other system. 
that there is no repetition okay so this uh, kind of gives you a brief glimpse into the idea about how the atoms are arranged in a crystalline material what is the difference between crystalline and amorphous material what are the different crystal systems in a uh, available and what are the different Bravi lattices that can be available and the idea that the understanding of the arrangement of atoms is crucial is at the heart of the property evaluation of any given material so with this background next class we'll study in details about the different kind of cubic systems we'll focus on the cubic system and we'll understand the different kind of cubic system and uh, we'll also touch upon the hexagonal system till the next class have a great day goodbye